Okay. Welcome everyone. We are back after a week. Oh, uh, progressive discussions. Welcome to progressive discussions, you jabronis. Seven lucky bells for progressive discussions for for a um, a, a very um, wet Saturday. It's raining, mm -hmm. and I, I take it it's going to be that way all day. I don't know. Oh, the did they or, show that. or did they say it was going to end and clear up tonight? But well, probably not. The map showed that it would be gone soon. All right. Yeah. L L seven lucky bells. The humidity won't be gone. Though. Oh, see, that's the problem. I can handle dry heat, like what they have in the, in the American Southwest, but not humidity. Everything we discuss politically is part of our series, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. Okay, <clears throat> soaking that cronk, I mean that conk energy, soaking that conk energy. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. What else is new in corporate America, King Neptune? I know. Um, well, all right, I'll get on with the show. He's busy. He's playing, he's playing deep sea chess. Cute. Yes, not three-dimensional, which was not a real game, by the way. Cute. Uh, um, yeah, I was just telling the, my co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, that I was uh, having a discussion with the caregiver about pharmaceutical advertisements, big pharma ads on TV, and you have the disclaimer. It scares uh, the life out of you. Yeah. And then you have the one for Cialis and Viagra. If your erection lasts more than four hours, see the doctor. And I can just picture a man going into the ER mm -hmm. and, and the woman behind the desk will say, why are you here? Usually it's that's how the women are when you first come in the ER. You know, no, uh, nobody hot looking. Why are you here? And then you announce that your boner won't go down. It's been that way for four hours and everybody starts laughing and, yeah. and looking at you and smiling. Anyway, uh, we are going to consume the last two Yinling summer wheats. Wizen, Wizen beer. Uh, there, there it is, or better yet, there it is. Uh, so I don't have to worry so about. Wheat. So I don't have to worry about positioning the damn bottle properly, so you can see the label. Amer America's oldest brewery, 1829, established, founded 1829, Yinling, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. This is summer wheat. Okay, and there you can see. Um, traditional Wizen beer. It's like Nancy Sinatra's old song, Summer Wine. I thought oh, she, uh, she sang, uh, These wine. Boots Were Made for a Walking. That was one of the. And hits. walking is what they do. So some One of these days, these boots are going to walk all over you. Yeah, but this one is a song she sang with. Uh, yeah, it looks good. She sang with, uh, I forget his name. Peter Lemon Jello. <laughs> Remember, remember that infomercial? And Slim Whitman sold more albums in England than the Beatles. <laughs> the Yodeling Cowboy. <laughs> there was uh, seven bells for Slim Whitman. It's probably ta taking the big dirt sleep. And uh, the harmonic cats. Remember the midget with the with the huge harmonica? It was bigger than him, and he's trying to play it. Uh, the bass. We're talking about Saturday morning. Well, as a kid, I got up early. Saturday afternoon, you know, daytime commercials. That's when I used to watch the National Wrestling Alliance, Georgia and Florida Championship Wrestling, the NWA, when Ric Flair was, was young. Channel 9. And the Four Horsemen, they were young guys. Uh, managed by J.J. Dillon. Anyway, um, I do not 
No, I do not think I did this last Saturday, but we are going to have a moment of silence with bells for the late great Adam West, who passed away at the age of 88 years old. Uh, from uh, He had leukemia, and I'm surprised he lived that long. Usually 88 is a very ripe old age for a man, plus with leukemia. Yes, Batman himself passed away. Mm -hmm. So a moment of silence, and this is a very special moment of silence for me, because I was a huge fan of that old series. All right, moment of silence for Adam West. A little belated, but he deserves it. Okay, um, let, me, let me have uh, my first sip of uh, yinling uh, summer wheat. I think I will be getting yinling stout for next time. No, not the stout. I don't even think they make a stout. Either, either, either uh, Lord Chesterfield um, ale or Porter, I'm sorry, I will be getting Porter. And I found out the difference between a stout and a porter. Uh, professor, a uh, uh, craft beer expert and enthusiast, Professor Dave Coulter, told me that um, uh, with, <coughs> with a porter, they use a malted barley and with stout they use roasted barley and I believe malting is when you sprout grains and he says I am right I asked him uh, the process known as malted comes from sprouting the grains and uh, yeah so that's that's the difference mm -hmm. of course sprouting grains uh, like sprouting seeds, uh, increases their nutritional value substantially. S certain nutrients. Okay. Salute. Salute. Nazdrovia. All right. Well, that that would be if I had frosty cold vodka from the freezer. Then you would say that. You know. Um, I, that I'm, I mentioned last week about Progresso Soups, putting giant pieces of potato mm -hmm. and say, yeah, uh, cheap filler. Um, but I don't know if you, I don't really have any product to bash uh, uh, this week. Um, I, and I don't want to rehash... Uh, how the American food industry mm -hmm. and American retail continues to screw the consumer. They do. They have contempt for their consumers, even though they talk about customer service is all they freaking care about. And you know, <clears throat> they should be caring about quality. And then the customer service, the customers, the customer situation will take care of itself. Well, you know, put uh, service first, and 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 everything else would take care of itself in business. Whole Foods was sold to Amazon this week. Oh, so John Mackey, the scumbag Mackey, is no longer uh, in charge of Whole Foods. Well, I hope Amazon does the right thing and uh, puts some integrity back into Whole Foods. Well, we will see. We will see. You know, uh, no, uh, no fake phony, uh, non-GMO, organic uh, foods from China that are, that are not organic and non-GMO. They, you know, they were lying about that. That's why when I buy something non-GMO and organic, I buy a 
um, not a private label, not a store label, but I buy a brand name and it has to have not not just the, the stupid USDA certified organic, which is a joke. It has to have a third party uh, independent. Uh, independent assayed, assay, uh, independent or, uh, uh, organization that specializes in certifying foods to be organic non -G and non-GMO. Mm -hmm. A third party. Uh, it could be like, for instance, there's one in um, Oregon, uh, California, I'm sure has them, you know, they're, they're around, they're out there. Europe has them. I think one is in Switzerland. But these are reputable, established organizations that um, would certify foods if they deserve it to be organic, you know, but, um, you know, uh, well, have you, uh, have you caught any of the gems coming out of Donald Trump's mouth on Twitter lately, uh, uh, calling Democrats obstructionists? Well, uh, 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 he says he's under uh, investigation for obstruction of justice. Right now, yeah, he is. yes. Uh, um, um. He was yakking today, <clears throat> reading from a script um, with all his old nonsense stuff. And then Clyburn came on, Congressman Clyburn, and he was talking about the problems up there. So, yeah. you know, either Trump is off in his own world, I mean, or something. if anyone is guilty of obstructionism or obstructing, it's 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 the Republican Party. In the last eight years, <clears throat> Obama was in Barack Obama, and uh, um, um, he's just pissed off that um, the Democrats uh, want want to keep the Affordable Care Act and and have compassion <clears throat> for the uh, twenty. 20 some odd, 22, 23, 24, whatever it is, million, million people. Yeah. Going to be kicked off. Yeah, low income people that rely on the Affordable Care Act. And of course, uh, some states are 100% for uh, universal single payer. Um, and um, I think California, which kind of surprised me because I thought the Moonbeam Jerry Brown was sort of in the back pocket of uh, companies like Nestle's, you know, with the bottle of bottling up all that spring water during a severe drought. Uh, but he surprised me, and I think New York, which I'm really surprised, uh, New York is gunning for it. Um, but then again, I shouldn't be, you know. I mean, uh, Andrew Cuomo is the son of the great progressive uh, Mario Cuomo. Bob Grant used to make fun of all the time, calling him Svachim. Uh, you know, uh, the late Bob Grant. Yeah, and I mean, uh, New York State is, without a doubt, more progressive than New Jersey. I mean, if you're low income, you will live better and get more programs if you resided in New York State than in our state. Um, I really highly doubt if there are any progressives running for a governor. Uh, they all seem like, uh, what's the word, centrists? Middle of the road? Well, Phil Murphy is from Wall Street. You like John Corzine. He, for, he worked for by Goldman, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs, like John Corzine. Guadano is, you know, uh, Christie's. Girl, yeah, like so, like uh, like what John, choice do you have? like John Corzine was a former. Uh, he's yeah. he's a billionaire, worked for Goldman Sachs and ran as a Democrat, yeah. and won as a Democrat in New Jersey. Yeah. Now, that doesn't say great things for the two-party system. If you have a Democrat that was a Goldman Sachs Wall Street man, doesn't say good things. Well, Mr. Paul Ryan, yeah. 
is now using this shooting at the uh, Congress congressional baseball you know, game. He's blaming Bernie Sanders. <laughs> no, he's using the shooting to let's all get together and work together and boom. Meanwhile, I sing Kumbaya. Meanwhile, <laughs> his latest budget proposal <coughs> has all those cuts in it for the poor. Well, uh, um, uh, the Republicans are, are, are experts at throwing the big distractions at mainstream America. Hmm. Let's distract them while, while we're picking their pockets yeah. and, uh, and pulling um, a reverse Robin Hood. Well, and then blaming them for picking their pockets. A reverse. And then, and then saying that all those, those poor moochers are picking our pockets. Yeah. Meanwhile, your pockets of the rich are not even paying your fair share in income taxes, right. if any taxes at all. Right. So it's, it's so there. You're. It's the middle class that are that are getting hammered all the time. You know, um, for the past uh, thirty some odd years. So uh, mm -hmm. it's all it's all big mind game. It's all carnival snake oil. Uh, Come on in, Charlatan, see the bearded lady. The Barker. Not Bob Barker either. No. Yeah, it's all carnival snake oil, uh, um, um, sh charlatan, uh, uh, bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit is what it is. And, um, you know, um, hey, I'm, hey, I'm surprised, um, Jesse Ventura, by the way, is still doing book signings for his new book, uh, Marijuana Manifesto. Yeah, I saw that. I saw his new book, yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, he, he's right. Our founding fathers uh, grew lots of hemp and yes, thought, they did. thought very highly of hemp. Yes, they did. They, I, I don't know about the part about all men being created equal because they had slaves, you know. Yes, they did. In the Northeast in the Northeast, but... Um, and well, that was the economic uh, situation that pre... Uh, that was in effect at that time. Yes, and, okay. and, and so also, also uh, I watched a documentary. Of course, I watched Ancient Aliens, you know. I watched, uh, I watched a lot of things uh, on cable. <clears throat> um, I watched the American Pickers. AHC. I think the channel is. It plays a lot of heavy-duty uh, documentaries. I think it's called AHC. American Pickers exploit senior citizens, <laughs> widows and widowers alike. This is the American Picker mentality. Uh, excuse me, sir. I, uh, you know, uh, I hate to bother you, uh, but uh, you know. We offer a service, so we'd like to take a look at your in your barn or in your attic or in your in your basement, and uh, we will clean out your 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 attic or 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 uh, bait or barn for free if you let us keep whatever we find. Or or they'll like say no, the pickers pay. They pay, but they don't. They don't. They never tell. The old geezer or the or the old lady. Well, Frank and what Mike it's are, really worth. Frank and Mike are pretty fair. They well then they, they must have changed. They somebody ways. will they'll they'll get something they like it. The guy will say okay fifty bucks, and like Mike will say no 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 it's it's worth about maybe a hundred. He's so they've gotten nice. They've got they, now wait who's the chubby guy Mike? That's uh, Frank. 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 They drive around in the big white van. I know, I know. I don't watch it because, uh, because he uh, years ago that's what they did. They they high fived each other as they drove off and say, uh -huh. "Boy, really, we we really made a killing with this old guy." You know, like uh, they they didn't tell him what it was really worth. No, no, Michael Frank usually. So they they must have, you know, maybe yeah. somebody got in their case about it, but uh, yeah, good luck to Jesse Ventura and his new book. Uh, hemp is where it's at, the most versatile plant on God's green earth. Hey. It's extremely versatile. 
Oh, I got a Chisler's Hall of Shame. Oh. I got one. You know, I'm sure you people out there have been bombarded with commercials from the Duluth Trading Company. Yeah! Bombarded with them. Well, guess what? Out of curiosity, I went to their website, DuluthTrading.com, whatever, just to check out something simple, like, um, like uh, let's say, t-shirts that would uh, make me feel more comfortable and more cool in the summertime. There's a new synthetic material that allows for that. Bamboo. A bamboo t-shirt. Yeah, bamboo. Yeah. Maybe I, will, I should wear a bamboo vest and, uh, 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 anyway. Duluth makes non-binding underwear. Uh, well, they have a, they have a, a shirt. It looks like a long sleeve, uh, casual, like a sport or a work shirt that's supposed to, uh, you know, uh, uh, be very breathable and cool in the summer. Mm -hmm. But they also have t-shirts of that material. Anyway, I checked out the t-shirts. There's no friggin' way I'm paying 20 to $30 for one t-shirt. So what I did was I went to Walmart and lo and behold, Hanes makes t-shirts out of a, a synthetic material called uh, Cool Dry. That's the name of the material, Cool Dry. Cool, C-O-O-L, cool, dry. I read about it. It sounds just like the the material that uh, the little trading advertises. Mm -hmm. And uh, guess what? Six dollars and seventy some odd cents cheaper per T-shirt. Per ah. T-shirt, as opposed, Hanes makes it. That's the Walmart price. The Walmart, six seventy something. What I did was I ordered it online. I ordered five of them. I ordered, just to try them out, I ordered solid white. They're all solids, by the way, no pocket. No advertisement. Like over here, I got the Florida Keys. Just solid colors. A crew neck. All right. I ordered white. I ordered navy blue. I ordered black. I ordered forest green and a maroon, mm. which is sometimes called burgundy red, I believe. Burgundy, yes. All right. They came in, they shipped it to the nearest Walmart for free. You don't pay for shipping. If you have it sent to your house, you have to pay for shipping. So you have it shipped to the nearest Walmart, which I did, which is only five minutes away from me. And, uh, and it's, the prices are cheaper on the website, by the way, on the on the Walmart.com website, so six dollars and seventy some odd cents. Got five of them. Hanes, cool dry. Um, they're a hundred percent synthetic material, and uh, it sounds very similar to the material Duluth Trading Company is advertising, except at a fraction of the price. So. That uh, that jabroni that does the commercial, I recognize his voice. I'm almost sure that's the Arby's dude that says, We've got the, the meat. meat. If next time you listen to Duluth Trading, that guy, close your eyes as he's talking. He sounds just, I bet that's, I bet he's, he, he does commercial voiceovers. Mm -hmm. and, he, and in this case, for different companies. But anyway, so... Twenty to thirty dollars for one T-shirt, Duluth Trading Company. You are inducted into the Chiseler's Hall of Shame. Shame on you, you crooks! Come on, give me a break. It would have cost me a fortune to get a a, a reasonable amount of T-shirts from the Duluth yeah, even, Trading Company. Even, uh, they have shirts like that too. Uh, even Sven Gulli. Yeah. Uh, the T-shirts like with Adam West or Star Trek or uh, the, the oh nostal sell. nostalgia nostalgia yeah. nostalgia T-shirts they're cheaper than that I think they're about sixteen bucks something like that yeah uh, oh of course uh, Vince McMahon's WWE mm -hmm. 
the pro wrestler pro wrestler t-shirts I think are are way up there because you know oh Vince has got to make his profit you know oh, yeah. you know he's like Donald Trump uh, uh, what the hell somebody was complaining that they they had breakfast in Trump Tower and a glass of orange juice was like cost cost a pretty penny. Like a hospital. It was yeah, like yeah, hospital. Yeah. Oh, right, the the, yeah. the cafeteria in a hospital, right? Yeah. Yeah. Aspirin will cost you ten bucks. Well, they bill you know? they bill uh, Medicare and the insurance company. Uh, I think a a dollar an aspirin. If anybody takes aspirin anymore, I don't even know. They, well, they complain that aspirin, which is an extract from a, a certain tree, um, so like acid. white, I think white willow. White willow. Okay. Yeah. They originally, the bad publicity around aspirin was this, uh, in stomach or intestinal bleeding, right? Yeah. But Tylenol, acetaminophen, does the same thing. So you know, it's like. Uh, well, I have my, uh, I have, a, 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 look, and all the doctors, they'll, get, they'll go for 40 aspirin. Baby aspirin. When you can go for fish oil without all those problems. Are you ta you're talking about the, when they recommend baby, a uh, low dose baby aspirin. Yeah, 82 for, degrees for, or what, I mean, uh, for 82 degrees. Yeah, for, for cardio, blood. for fish cardio, blood. as a blood thinner. Right. But you could take natural vitamin E, 400 units, mixed to copperols, and a good omega-3 fish yeah. oil supplement. And get the same benefit. And like the one I take, I take uh, my, my fish me. oil capsules are 1,400 milligrams. That's the highest I can find, 1,400 milligrams. The DHA of, must be the big one that you must get. That's the brain food. Compared to well, it's more than that. That's the that's the primary. Right. Oh, you know which has 500 milligrams of DHA? It's a it's an omega three. That's the Kalamati. Yeah. Register. That's their registered trademark name, Kala Marine. Yeah. That's from squid. Now, supposedly, no, not supposedly. In reality, uh, salmon is not the king of omega-3s anymore. Now it's uh, the New Zealand green lip mussel. <laughs> yeah, now eels, by the way, are very high in omega-3, probably because of the, the fat content. If you've ever skinned an eel, I have, <laughs> and, and consumed them, they are very high in fat. Like salmon, no, worse than salmon, what am I saying? But it's a good Wait, fat. If it's a good fat, then it's <clears throat> a good fat. And. Um, also, I've been reading some amazing articles about um, um, uh, virgin organic coconut oil and Alzheimer's disease, mm -hmm. and more uh, evidence has been shown that aluminum does play a big role uh -huh. in the Alzheimer's patients. A very big role. Alright, well, yeah. Alright, so that's something to remember. Uh, don't cook in aluminum. Don't cook in aluminum. Yeah. Don't take Tums. Oh, Tums. you're it's, right. Uh, you know, aluminum. Antacids. Antacids. What about antiperspirants? Antiperspirants, yes. With not, aluminum. not deodorant. Antiperspirant deodorant because there's an aluminum in there and guess what? When you apply it, it, it probably goes into your system transdermally, yeah. which is through the skin. Yes. Transdermally. Yes. You really? I, had, I had a nurse practitioner here the other day, and she, oh. uh, a friend of mine, has a gas problem. So she says, "Why don't you take? Why don't you take Tums?" Oh, sure. Hey, hey, Tums is for you know hey, an acid. You know they, what they uh, do? They say, "Oh, it's a great calcium source. Calcium well, carbonate. Too, yeah. Yeah. Calcium carbonate, but you don't want the aluminum." No. I mean, it's true. If the aluminum wasn't in Tums and you got that whopping dose of calcium carbonate, I would say, you know what? Use it as a calcium supplement. Oh, well. <laughs> but, you know, um, uh, just, uh, just be an educated consumer, people. That's your best bet.
you know, but anyway, let us sink our teeth into these readings. Um, you know, uh, um, I, I'm, I'm probably going to use this cartoon on th this show. It, 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 it's a pirate ship, and they're making poor, low-income, sick people, you know, like hooked up to IV and everything, and walking the plank. I thought they were going to row the boat. No, no, yeah. they have them. They have them, the Republicans, you know, like your Paul Ryans, and they have them walking the plank. And, and it has, it says something really clever on the, on the plank and on the pirate ship. You know, um, you know, it's kind of like the cartoon where Donald Trump says to the patient in, 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 on the hospital gurney, don't worry, you're covered. And meanwhile, he's covering the person's face. You know, like when somebody yeah. croaks. And they die. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's it's like that. All right. Go ahead. I hope someone from the Trump camp can explain to me why I should not be very afraid of what is going on with the repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act. Oh yeah, the Ryan says you don't. There is no need to worry. There is no need to be a, of, of concern. Of course, yes. Republicans in the House of Representatives passed health care legislation that the President immediately celebrated with a, a, a bash in the Rose Garden. Yeah. At that time, it didn't seem to matter that the more moderate U.S. Senate had not acted on the proposed new law. President Trump touted the legislation as fair to everyone and gloated about it for weeks thereafter. Recently, I'm guessing that an aide sat down next to our leader and read him the words in the bill because now this same man says the bill is mean. Mean? It's cruel. I don't want to be mean myself, but on the what level is this a functioning and effective leader? This is not the only example of the chaos in the White House. Our president changes his mind based only on to whom he has last spoken. <laughs> Why is this okay? Why am I told to get over it? No matter the latest buffoonery from an individual clearly unable to function in his job. Yeah, his his attention span is very very limited. He's folk, uh, whoever he spoke to last. Uh, you know, um, I don't know if it's trying to be liked by everyone, trying to <laughs> seek approval from everyone, trying to make everyone happy, including the scumbag uh, Republicans. Well, yeah. it is. It is that everything that happens to him is the greatest ever in history. Oh yeah, he's the greatest president that ever lived, yeah. Everything he does is the greatest in history? <laughs> yes, everything. So, and of course, everything is a witch hunt. So Everything uh, is uh, against him. Anyone, anybody who is out... It, it, who criticizes him or is investigating him is uh, fake news. Is is uh, is involved in a witch hunt? It's a witch hunt. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I, you know. Uh, um, so if he lies, let's say he if he, let's say he lies under oath, which might have happened Ooh. already. Which might have happened already. Ooh. Because he's Donald Trump, he feels that it's okay for him to do that because he's really special. In a daylight tweet storm on Thursday, Donald Trump criticized reports that he is now under investigation for obstruction of justice in connection with the firing of FBI Director James Comey. Now James Comey is, is, James Comey is singing like a canary, I think. Denouncing it as another witch hunt. 
that is unfairly targeting him. Of course, unfairly. They made up a phony collusion with the Russian story. They found zero proof, so now they go for obstruction of justice on the phony story. Trump tweeted, nice. What? Nice. Nice, yeah. You know, nice. he always puts the uh, nice. a little thing after the end of his tweet. Trump followed up about an hour later with another critical tweet. Here. You are witnessing the single greatest witch hunt in American political history. Led by some very bad and conflicted people. Very bad people, huh? Nearly eight hours later, Trump again complained about being singled out and brought up his Democratic critics, including 2016 election opponent Hillary Clinton. Well, that's a big distraction to get people off his back, to, 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 to drag Hillary into it. Now, uh, hey, even his daughter Ivanka said Washington, D.C., mm. Is, is 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 mean and cruel. She had no idea how cruel Washington can be. You know, so anyway. Why is it that Hillary Clinton's family and Dems dealings with Russia are not looked at, but my non-dealings are? Hey, throughout 2016, all I did was see articles online from WikiLeaks and Anonymous and 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 everyone else about dealings about about dealings yeah. uh, about uh, um, uh, election frauds and this that and the other thing and uh, uh, um, um, mysterious murders that were mysterious mysterious suicides mm -hmm. quote unquote uh, of certain people. Uh, blah blah blah. The list goes on and on and on and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but justice was never served. No one was ever brought to justice. Trump then tweeted about Clinton's use of private email account while Secretary of State. Well, yeah, he needs to get get the get the heat off of him. So Please. she was not charged after a Justice Department investigation. Associates of Clinton and other Democrats have not been linked to what U.S. intelligence officials describe as a Russian effort to influence the 2016 election by hacking email accounts of Democratic Party officials. Trump, who has denied any kind of collusion with Russia, appeared to be responding to a Washington Post report that Special Prosecutor Robert Mueller is interviewing senior intelligence officials as part of a widening probe that now includes an examination of whether President Trump attempted to obstruct justice. While the Justice Department appointed Mueller to investigate Russian efforts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election and any links to the Trump campaign, his assignment also includes any matters that arose or may arise from the Russia probe. Comey told the Senate Intelligence Committee that he believes Trump fired him last month because he resisted a request to drop the Russia investigation, especially as it related to former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Mm. Trump said at one point that he fired Comey for poor performance. So he also reportedly told a group of Russian officials that the Comey dismissal would help get the Russia probe behind him. He also called Comey a nut job. Oh, okay. Comey's a nut job. Okay. 
Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein appointed Mueller as special counsel mm -hmm. shortly after Comey's firing. Rosenstein acted because General Attorney General Jeff Sessions had recused himself in the Russia investigation. After it was revealed, he had two meetings with Russian Ambassador Sergei Kisilak before the November election. Sergei kissed my ass? What? News that Mueller is now investigating Trump for obstruction of justice comes amid reports that Trump mm. has discussed whether to remove the special counsel. White House officials said the president is not considering such a step. Vice President Mike Pence has hired a private lawyer to help him respond to questions raised by the special counsel investigating interaction between the Trump campaign and Russia. Pence Communications Director Jared Agon confirmed on Thursday that Pence hired Richard Cullen, former U.S. Attorney, who's chairman of McGuire Woods, Woods a Washington-based law firm. The Vice President is focused entirely on his duties and promoting the president agenda and looks forward to the president agenda as, uh, excuse me and looks forward to a swift conclusion of this matter Aiken said the news was first reported by the Washington Post okay. Washington The U.S. has one of the world's largest health disparities between the rich and the poor behind only Chile and Portugal. Oh, absolutely. And its health care system and lack of social supports are to blame. Researchers examining surveys on health and income from people in 32 countries found poor Americans reported worse health than rich U.S. residents in significant numbers. Of the poorest third, <coughs> excuse me, of Americans, 38.2% reported fair or poor health, compared with just 12.3% of the richest third leaving the U.S. in the bottom three of the nations examined. According to the Harvard study published in the June issue of Health Affairs, the gap is caused by several factors, including the high number of uninsured in the country particularly before implementation of the Obama Care Act. There are much higher out-of-pocket costs per person in the United States than you typically see in other places. And the way those out-of-pocket costs are distributed is less equitable. So people who are poor are less able to afford health insurance that is generous. As a result, they tend to be more exposed to the high costs of the U.S. health care system. But that's not the whole picture. Elizabeth H. Bradley, a professor of public health at Yale and the faculty director of the Yale Global 
Health Leadership Institute was not involved in the study. Said another issue may be society itself. The U.S. provides fewer social safety nets, that is, services and programs that help prevent people from falling into poverty. When we look at other high-income countries and see how much of the GDP these different countries spend on things like income support, housing, and nutrition, the U.S. is much, much lower. Uh. So the richest country in the world is a cheapskate not only in terms of uh, doing anything positive for its people, uh, including low-income people, but, and including its veterans, but also uh, a cheapskate, a cheap bastard, in terms of uh, um, public transportation. The rail system is, uh, is full of dinosaurs compared to the rest of the world the rail system, light rails and such. You know, they have the uh, high speed of uh, bullet trains and monorails and we have Amtrak. Which derails every so many miles. And it's very uncomfortable uh, ride uh, and, and much slower, of course, than the, well, yeah, than, than the bullet train. It has trend. to slow down all the time for the bad track. Even China you know? has a much better rail system than the United States. Much more modern. Oh, yeah. Not that everybody can use it, of course, because, you know... Well, it, there's they, the economy over there only serves about maybe a hundred million people. What do you mean serves? I, I, you they mean, got well over a billion people in their country. So, so in other words, were you talking about the income of China, the Chinese? Yeah, so they, it's a, uh, the, I don't know what they charge to to take their their bullet train in in the mainland China. I know, China. but what I'm saying is, only about a hundred million people can take part in that stuff. Well, I have a in, higher income people. I have a friend who uh, is not an elitist right. by any uh, means. Uh, is from Shanghai, has a good office job that takes the train uh, to and from work, uh -huh. and uh, doesn't complain about it. Uh, you know, I mean. Uh, oh, by the way, speaking of Shanghai, I watched a documentary. Uh, uh, interviewing the architect that designed the Shanghai Tower. What a what a beautiful skyscraper that is, and and it's earthquake resistant, mm -hmm. and um, it's designed to uh, allow a lot of the sunlight into it. It is it is uh, artistically very aesthetic, pleasing to the eye, uh, very modern looking, and it has. Well, it has to have the ability to move a little bit and sway. I mean, uh -huh. I guess that that's how it becomes earthquake resistant. You, you can't have a rigid building. But it's a beautiful building. I mean, um, uh, taller than anything that the Western Hemisphere has. Heaven forbid uh, an American uh, 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 company should build the world's tallest skyscraper you know they 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 were real cheapskates when they built the uh, 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 the uh, the new World Trade Center <coughs> in lower Manhattan they, by the way they only it only surpasses Chicago's uh, uh, well it's not the Sears Tower anymore um, It's another, there's another name, uh, but all right, let's just call it the Sears Tower for now. It only surpasses it because of the spire, the antenna or whatever. You mean they call it a spire. In New York. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, a, there's a building in Dubai 
Well, that's the that, that's the tallest building in the world. The Shanghai building, I think, is number two. The Shanghai Tower. Uh, um, Yeah, uh, it has a real funny name now, but uh, but originally it was the Sears Tower in Chicago. Uh, yeah, you don't you don't beat another building be because of an extended <laughs> antenna-like object you stick on the roof. That's like that's like cheating. That's like that's like putting a prosthetic nose on your racehorse. <laughs> yeah, winning winning by a nose. Uh, winning by a nose, right? Oh God, put one of those. You know the. The, the 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 big schnozola that came with the eyeglasses yeah the, yeah look like groucho Marx. yeah yeah put that on your horse i won by one by your nose uh -huh. oh man but um that's not the way you do it now in in 20 uh, next year i think the the nordstrom tower which is by central park is supposed to uh surpass any building in the western hemisphere the, the brand new Nordstrom Tower, the world's tallest apartment building. Mm. Well, condos, whatever. Mm. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Um, wherever you can get it this week, or in a few days. Yeah. Wheat bran. Wheat bran. Course. It didn't seem to be at Shoprite. This it week. didn't seem, seem to be. To be. Gotcha. Right. Well, I know, I know uh, that um, um, Bob's Red Mill. Yeah, that's the one. Always has a good one. That's the one. That's usually there. Course. The, uh, in my opinion, the best wheat brand is the Course one. Yeah. It's a little better than the. Uh, it's smaller, smaller, smaller. Yeah, it, it's it's a um, it's a it's a larger and wider broom. Yeah. Uh, uh, on an angle, to sweep more debris. Yeah. Put it in a nice way for the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a colonic evacuator. Hey, a, na yeah. a natural colonic evacuator. But there is. Uh, it's an insoluble fiber, as opposed to soluble fiber, which is found in legumes, oat bran, and beans. beans. Yeah, guess what I said. Beans. Yeah, beans for you, for you common folk out there. Beans and peas. Perhaps the most controversial element of the Trump administration's budget is the proposal to reduce. Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program food stamps. Yeah, snap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, well, who cares? Twenty-five percent. Who cares? That's quite a bit. Who cares if the poor, if the poor eat or not? They don't. They don't care. Right. Of course. Capitalists don't care. Or one hundred ninety-three billion dollars over the next ten years. Yeah. Well, more money for the. Uh, to stuff in their pockets, I think, and to give to their, to their, uh, uh, to, to their elite uh, corporate friends. What pisses me off? There's 44 million people on food stamps, and right. to hear the Republicans talk, these are all moochers and frauds. It's only two percent of the total budget. The but the point is. Why would 44 million people be on there? It can't, certainly can't be fraud. No, no. In, in, in order... There has to be a reason. It is very, very difficult to cheat yeah. the welfare system nowadays. Exactly. They, they are very strict. They have, uh, they have deliberately uh, uh, reformed their system uh, to only allow those that are worthy those that qualify receive social services. It, you, it, it, I would be very shocked if any if anyone these days is able to fool the welfare caseworkers and to cheat the system. Right. So how can there be forty? Would you say four. 44, 44, forty-four million, million cheaters and mooches? No, no. 
No, they just don't want to help the poor at all. Period at all. They don't want to give you anything. Right. Hey, if they yeah, who, who, who who went out there fighting for those poppy fields in Afghanistan yeah. and, and for big oil, if they're not willing to help them, then what makes you think they want to help a, a, a non-veteran poor person? Exactly. No, they want to do one or two things. They want to enslave you in a privatized prison or they want you to drop dead if you're poor. Yeah. Spend yeah. Go ahead. Column A or column B? Spending for food stamps quadrupled, reaching $70 billion last year. Because there's no fucking job market in the United States. That's another thing. That, that's what I'm saying. That's another that's thing. The, reason. They, the, the Republicans like to tell people, go get a job, you bum. Hey, why don't you go get a job, Republican congressman? You'll get a job. You you work less than, than part time hours right. on a hundred and seventy you don't know what you're talking about. On a hundred and seventy five thousand a year, not counting perks. So put some homework in, you know? Uh, yeah. Now who's the moocher? Yeah. When you think about it. Food stamp enrollment skyrocketed during Barack Obama's presidency because the administration believed that maximizing handouts would maximize prosperity. They like to call it handouts if you're poor. If you're if you, if you're if you're rich getting free money, it's it's a subsidy. <laughs> you're, you're being subsidized. Every five dollars in new food stamp benefits generates as much as nine dollars of economic activity. Yeah, because the little guy puts a lot of money into exactly. the economy. Exactly. Not the fat cat. Exactly. The fat cat o it only makes up for, what, 2% of the, of the top population. And how many refrigerators can they buy? No, you no. Know? And how, how, how many, how many, how much revenue in, 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 uh, in uh, sales taxes on yachts uh, or whatever the hell else they, or property taxes on, on, on their beach houses can be accumulated. How much revenue can you accumulate from that? So, the feds bankrolled food stamp recruiting campaigns. A North Carolina social services agency won a Hunger Champions Award. Hunger Champions for attacking Mountain Pride as a reason to avoid government handouts. In Alabama, taking food stamps was marketed as patriotic, and the administration effectively suspended the three-month limit for able-bodied adults without dependents to collect food stamps. Well, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's not just being able able bodied. Yeah, there has to be a job waiting for you too. You can be able bodied and be sitting home with your thumbs up your ass with no yeah. place to work. And From we, yeah. Two thousand eight to twenty ten, the number of able bodied recipients doubled. According to the Congressional Research Service out of touch, man. The, go the government is out of touch with reality. The food stamp poster boy of 2013 was <laughs> Jason Greenslate, a 29-year-old surfer <laughs> who declared that he avoids work and uses his monthly food stamp allotment to purchase as much sushi and lobster as two hundred dollars can buy. That's that's the Republican poster boy for food stamps. Yeah, against food stamps. Uh, not 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 a single mother trying to raise her her kids, and she can't get child support out of the old man, and she's struggling, and not her. Yeah, she's not it, a poster. But if the guy girl. is real, 
unlike the uh, welfare queen under Reagan. So he's like Cato Kalin? Remember if him? this guy is real, yeah. then whose fault is it that he's getting $200 a month? His or the social worker? The caseworker. Well, if if he's entitled to, well, he's not entitled. He's able-bodied. He's, he's able-bodied. He doesn't want to work. He wants to, you know. He wants to bang on the drum all day, around, like yeah. like the old rock song. Uh, um, well, yeah, you got to blame the caseworker. Absolutely. You don't blame. You don't blame. Look, it's like if somebody if somebody's a homeowner and they have a big doghouse. That their their late Great Dane used to occupy, and they and they and they put an advertisement, doghouse for rent, seven hundred dollars a month. Who do you who do you really blame? You, the the the, uh, the the landlord or the sucker that pays seven hundred dollars a month for the doghouse? <laughs> then it's off to the beach. <laughs> Greenslade touted his gourmet purchases. I hope he exists. All paid for by our wonderful tax dollars. It's free food. It's awesome. Hey, go to Washington and look at all the pastries and 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 organic foods and 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 really top of the line food that our congressmen and congresswomen and senators partake in, free from paid by taxpayers. They could most certainly afford to pay for their own food, uh, 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 a retirement plan, health insurance. Yeah. These are, many of them are multi-millionaire and multi-billionaires that, uh, that have like, a, you might as well say they have like a, 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 a lifetime secure job yes. in there because they keep on getting reelected. They could pay they their pension. They could pay for their own uh, uh, in, uh, retirement account. Like I just said, food, retirement accounts, health insurance policies. Yeah. You know, I know so. I know a, a self-employed individual uh, that pays five hundred dollars a month for a mediocre health insurance policy, and 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 this person runs a business that sells tires. Uh, a, a, not not a. Not a, a a big shot, like the one, like the uh, congressmen and senators, the Republicans mm. in, in in Washington. Now, so you know they can afford to support themselves; that they don't need uh, uh, to mooch off of the taxpayers. Or do they need a raise every year? Guaranteed raise that they do not give to the people. No, they'll cut food stamps, right. but they'll, but they'll give. The lazy bastards will give themselves an automatic raise every That's year correct. by working less than part-time hours. That's correct. Okay, there you go. Hypocrites! Trump Budget Director Mick Mulvaney declared last month, if you are on food stamps and you are able-bodied, we need you to go to work. Yeah, you hear that, Republican Congress? We need you to go to work. The Trump administration proposes phasing in work requirements for able-bodied adults without dependents. Able-bodied, yeah, 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 work, yeah. Give them a job. Where's the job, you jerk-offs? They're all outsourced. No, I thought that was already infiltrated since 1996. H-1B. Newt Gingrich and Clinton. Yeah, and now, and now we have H-1B uh, visa. Uh, professional immigrants being imported <clears throat> that work cheaper in the United States. So, there's no job market. This is a good first step for a program that swayed too many Americans to work less. Studies have shown that single mothers, married fathers, and families across the board work less when they are on food stamps. Oh yeah, you can't you can't pay your bills with food stamps, by the way, jerk off. But do they work less because they if they get the job, they'll lose the food stamps. Their benefit. They listen, if you if you make 
over a thousand if your income is over a thousand dollars a month you're too wealthy for Medicaid so the government the right-wing government rather thinks that if you get over a thousand dollars a month um, even if it's a little bit over that you can pay for your own uh, medical expenses boy how realistic is that mm -hmm. the Trump administration also proposes requiring state governments to begin covering a share of the costs oh, yeah, of they, food stamps yeah, yeah, they like uh, they like the states to take over mm -hmm everything and uh, if it happens to be if you happen to have a Republican um, um, administration running your state well guess what you you may have to move out of your state if you're poor uh, in addition to the share of administrative costs that they already pay currently State governments have little or no incentive to police the program because losses from fraud or waste don't come out of state budget. Hey, there, there's two magic words, fraud and waste. Gee, it's not only the poor that can be guilty of that. Unfortunately, such an idea is likely dead on Capitol Hill. The most important reason to curtail food stamp enrollment is because the program is a dietary disaster. Dietary disaster? You, 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 you buy, you can buy a, a food in stores that sell food. You cannot buy a food that's um, from a restaurant or, or a, a fast food. I don't even want to call them restaurants. A fast food place. You can't use food stamps there. So, you know, I mean, uh, um, if they want to arrange it so people cannot buy cookies and cake and candy uh, with food stamps, hey, that'll cut, ba that'll cut down on uh, 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 American obesity epidemic right there. Uh, you can't buy pet food with food stamps so hell if they really want to save money just omit junk Walter Willett chair of Harvard University's yeah. Department of Nutrition the Willis Tower that's what the Sears Tower is called now the Willis <laughs> you just he just in mind yeah observed in 2015 We've analyzed what food stamp participants are eating, and it's horrible food. Because it's, it, they can get more, they're, they're, because they're limited in the amount of food stamps they receive, so they have to stretch it out. So therefore, they buy, if they have a family to, to support, they buy cheaper food, and the cheaper food is the crappy food. It's a, it's a diet oh, designed to produce obesity and diabetes. What the fuck do they want? The, if the poor person has a child, more than one, one child, now they, the, the budget that they, they have to live on is more strict. It's a tighter budget. Mm -hmm. They have to stretch the food stamps. If they get, let's say, I, I know someone who has two children uh, that um, is getting a certain amount of food stamps and uh, the, the welfare uh, caseworker wanted to cut her food stamps by 50%. And she has children, 50%. Okay, so if she cuts her food stamps by 50%, well then this m mother has to live on a much tighter budget mm -hmm. so she has to stretch it she has to stretch those food stamps and what happens when you go to a store with rip-off prices like most stores in America well you end up buying cheap crappy food and the money food stamps runs out before the end of the month 
once it's gone, it's gone. It's gone. You, you, gotta eat, you gotta, you know, you gotta wait. Then you, you can't have any food. You gotta wait till the to the next month to roll around. Right. For sure. sure. I mean, you know, uh, that's why you see. I mean, it is a good idea, and it is as a, um, you are benefiting poor people by uh, arranging it so they don't end up using their, their food stamps on Kool-Aid and cookies and cake and candy and, and you know, mm -hmm. and snack foods, potato chips and pretzels and such. I mean, you know, you are, you are severely uh, cutting into uh, the obesity problem. You know, I mean, uh, you, you already cannot use food stamps at Burger King or McDonald's. You can't do that. You can't buy pet food. So, you know, um, so cut out the junk. Yeah. So? A 2017 study published in BMC Public Health Food found that food stamp recipients were twice as likely to be obese as eligible non-recipients. Oh, so eligible non-recipients never buy the wrong food, never consume the wrong food. No. No, never. So there's no, there's no, there is no obese person that is middle class or um, financially independent or uh, working a full-time job, uh, not living in poverty. No, nobody, nobody ever eats crap. No. Only poor people buy and eat crap, according to this individual. Well, unless you're this surfer who buys sushi and lobster. Well, he's, a, he's a surfer. He has to stay in, in shape, man. <laughs> he has to be able to balance on that surfboard, man. Cowabunga. Or whatever they yeah, say. Yeah, he's a surfer. How come he doesn't enter, you know... Contests? Contests and everything maybe, as a job. Maybe he's not that good. He doesn't want to lose his benefit. Maybe he's a he's what they call a beach bum. You ever, ah, hear, you ever hear a beach comber? Now we're talking. Well, Donald Trump on the beach would be a beach comber because of his hair, you know, but... No, maybe he's a beach bum. They had those. Uh, but why is the beach Frankie bomb? Avalon movies? Remember them? Yeah, yeah, Gidget and uh, uh, Funicello. Annette Funicello. They were on the beach. Yeah. Oh my God! The bathing suits—they were all covered up. There was there were no string bikinis or g-strings or anything. But the question is, why would a you know surfer, able-bodied and etc., be making more food stamps than someone? who is poor and eligible. If you're poor and eligible, That's the point. it makes more sense that you, you should get more food stamps than the damn surfer do. Right. Obviously, he's got a better caseworker than you. Maybe he's doing the caseworker. <laughs> it is easy to understand why a 2016 <laughs> Department of Agriculture report revealed that soft drinks and other sweetened beverages are the most common purchase in food stamp households. I wonder why they call it a carbonated drinks are called soft drinks. I mean, anything that's liquid feels soft. I gotta look at No that. alcohol. Oh, soft. No, no, no. Soft yeah. drinks are, carbon, are, are, are strictly carbonated beverages. Yeah, but there's no alcohol. That's why it's soft. Remember the guy but, but iced tea is not a soft drink. Why not? Lemonade is not a soft drink. Soft drinks are 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 soda. Is soda. Yeah, well lemonade is soda. Iced tea is soda. Sour spots. Yeah, you, li you listening hey, to this hey. jabroni over here? Remember the guy who Soda? The How could a lemonade be soda? Where are the bubbles? Where are the bubbles, man? Well, that's just <laughs> carbonated. You can carbonate anything. All right, all right, all right. Well, let's not waste. Let's not waste time debating over but silly things. But remember the old cowboy? He walks into the bar. Sar Sasper. Yeah, that's it. That's right. Yeah. Hey, uh, Sasparilla. Hold on. 
Hey, hoss. Oh, no, no, Bill Morrow likes to use the word hoss. Hey, partner. Can I have a tall, cold glass of sarsaparilli? I used to say sarsaparilli. Yeah. And that like, was more like, Am like a Amarilli, Texas. And that was a woman's drink. You know? Oh, yeah, they make they make fun of you in a salon. Yeah, exactly. The guy, yeah, that's like when, when Buddy Epson as Barnaby Jones used to order a tall glass of cold milk. There you go, yeah. He yeah. saw a glass of milk. Oh, God. Accounting for oh, oh, sodas oh. account for 10% oh. of monthly expenditures. Desserts, salty snacks, candy, and sugar account for another 10%. So they are, they are buying 80% of food. Food itself. Yeah. The Trump reform proposal ignores the easiest way to save more than $100 billion. Prohibit using food stamps for junk food. Hey, I didn't even read the article. I must be psychic. Food stamps should be remodeled along the lines of the Women, Infant and Children Program. Oh gosh. Which distributes coupons, redeemable only for relatively healthy foods. Yeah, instead of taking food out of the mouths of poor people and poor children, just reform it so they can't buy garbage food. A 2014 Stanford University study concluded that Prohibiting the use of food stamps for sugary drinks would prevent 141,000 kids from becoming fat. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, Doctor Reverend, the Reverend Doctor Bill was right. I think it stopped raining and, it, and it's it's clearing. It's clear now. It's and it would save a quarter million adults from diabetes. There you go. There you go. You're doing them a favor. You're doing. The fat bastards a favor. <laughs> and the obese children. Which, in my opinion, is child abuse. Carpet bombing people with subsidized calories can cause collateral damage. Carpet bombing, collateral damage. Young children in low-income families are more than 50% more likely to be obese than those in other families, according to the report. So instead of able body, they, they have too much of a body. The levity bells. Republican and Democratic governors and former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg pleaded with the USDA to allow them to restrict soft drinks. The USDA said no. Oh, really? No. Because, because of maybe the U.S. Uh, food industry that makes the garbage is... It green. was probably a freedom issue. Oh, okay. okay, okay, okay. Hey, you know, I just had a funny thought. I can picture uh, Governor Chris Christie preaching about, you know, uh, obe being anti-obesity. I just thought that was a funny <laughs> yeah. thought. You know, anyway. There are hungry children and adults in this nation, and the government can assist them without subverting private work ethics or public health. But there is no constitutional right to free junk food. Listen, you can't buy certain edible things like pet food uh, and fast food with SNAP. You already cannot buy them with the food stamps. So, what's the big deal if you throw cake, cookies, and candy, and potato chips and pretzels in with that? Right? I mean, big deal. You're actually doing these people a favor by, by, uh, um, you know, helping uh, uh, by uh, um, encouraging better eating habits. Trump's proposed food stamp reforms are a clean break from the Obama era fantasy that handouts will make America rich. 
No, Obama. No, I highly doubt if Barack Obama ever said that. <laughs> that handout. Well, yeah, handouts to uh, uh, corporate welfare handouts will only make them richer. Rich. Richer. Yeah. America rich, not the mainstream. Okay, listen, no, we're, we're, no, no. we're going to break for lunch. By the yeah, way, that yeah. is a very sharp-looking shirt you're My wearing, cowboy sir. Cowboy shirts, baby. He's wearing a black western shirt with the pearl snaps, a brother. piping on the collar. Or on the What do you call shoulder. those? Epilepsy? Piping. Oh, piping, piping. Okay, we're going to break for lunch. Now you're going to uh, view how to defeat a conservative Bible verses. Hit the pause button, read and learn, followed by promo Ooh. for newsletter censored. You know, if 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 the uh, if the staff of Newsletter Censor ever uh, gets their act together, which is uh, not always their own fault, you know, things will be rolling along smoothly. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. 
So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. That's right. It's another way of the government saying, drop dead. When an individual is, is uh, too wealthy for Medicaid and too young for Medicare. Yeah. And they are in the middle and they desperately need a, uh, a medical device like the friend of mine who suddenly needs a pacemaker. Mm. Hey, you know what I should tell him? I should tell him about Hawthorne Berry Extract. Dr. Atkins. I got it right here. It's still not open. Doctor, oh really, Dr. Robert Atkins says he called it a godsend for cardiac patients. It is. It is. And, and, a and tonic for the heart. A tonic. A tonic. Yeah. Hold on. Let me do the tonics get my sh blackthorn shillelagh a tonic for the cock you said oh the for the heart oh the heart <laughs> the no, heart. no the other thing that would be yeah. a royal jelly korean red ginseng panax ginseng wow look how it cleared up out there it got brighter it stopped raining oh, oh. we are on the second yinling um uh summer wheat up here, as you can see, some of them. <clears throat> craft beer, that is. Yeah. Even though there are beer snobs out there that called Yinling, that said Yinling, yin, yinling does not qualify uh, uh, as a uh, craft micro brewed beer. Well, let me tell you something. They must have been doing something right to be around since 1829 yeah you know and it's a uh, it's light years better than any nationally advertised cheap crappy mass-produced American beer that you see advertising on TV if you got the time we got 
the beer. What the hell does that mean? That means you should you should be drinking our beer. But you know what it is? They never. It's like with American cars advertising. They never talk about the virtues of the product. They talk. They have some cute jingle, some cute song. And women. Maybe chicks. Oh That's yeah, right. liquor stores. Women. Liquor stores always have uh, posters of uh, very attractive, uh, uh, women, scantily clad young women, and if they have, um, if they have a girl giving out samples of something, she's always young and attractive. Like there was a young and attractive Polish girl uh, uh, giving out uh, little shots of this uh, imported Polish vodka. <coughs> Because the liquor store, not far from me, there is in a town with a very large Polish community, and there's lots of vodka there. And um, you know, she was giving out samples of vodka, and uh, she's very, she's quite pretty. She's tall, blonde, you know, very Nordic-looking, Northern European-looking, uh, in her twenties, very friendly. Uh, of course, what is she going to be? Unfriendly. Here, try some vodka. She had an accent. Would you like to try some vodka, yes, sir? You know, it's, you know so. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, booze, car shows, booze. Uh. Um, they 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 use uh, uh, car dealers, uh, especially the, in the, on the Latin stations. They have a lot of hoochies doing them them car dealer commercials try to, you know, making you think that if you go there, uh, that girl really works there for them. And, and she, you'll get the best deal. Yeah, and you'll see her, you get to talk to her. Yeah, meanwhile, they're just doing commercials. Anyway, go ahead. <clears throat> Letter writers shout out how to get rid of Trump. Talk of impeachment. The unconstitutional Muslim ban, or how the Russians undermine the election. Yeah, it's almost like how much time do you have? There's so many uh, impeachable offenses, right? What are these juvenile, boorish Americans talking about? <laughs> what are these Americans trying to do? They can't deal with the fact that someone, not of their ilk, and certainly someone who should never have been become president did that while they were all playing with the future and the lives of fellow Americans and not paying attention to their interests and needs. So those fellow Americans struck back. Finally, now these losers who are on both sides of the aisle, by the way, and who inhabit the worlds of both entertainment and the media are gasping, grasping, excuse me, at any excuse or fantasy, fake news, legitimate blunders, and faux pas to find a strategy to get rid of trouble. Their sole raison d'être seems to be to make fun of a legitimate winner. A legitimate winner. Now that's a very interesting term. Legitimate winner. Threaten him and anyone else associated with him. He's only a legitimate winner because uh, Bernie Sanders got screwed. He is really the truth in, in, in a fair world the true uh, president of the United States if, if our system was honest and fair and, and not rigged to undermine any effort however small to reach a level of courtesy cooperation understanding that will help our country achieve real progress and prosperity for all its citizens Excuse me? Prosperity for all its citizens? All, all. Even after you cut all the help from the poor and take food out of their mouths 
and 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 um, um, it will make them stronger. Uh, and uh, and 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 why about bringing jobs back to the United States when jobs are being replaced by um, foreign workers? Interesting. These writers need to wake up, grow up, and understand that 47 percent of the people don't agree with them and their tactics. And in the long run, their childish whining threats, divisive behaviors will only serve to undermine our country. Yeah, well, that's another word uh, besides fake news that uh, get the guilty people that are under fire use, divisiveness. You're trying to divide Americans. It's almost as um, uh, ridiculous as uh, turtle faced bitch McConnell saying that the American people are not going to stand for that. Remember, mm -hmm. he, remember that? Mm -hmm. he always say American people are on his side. with his jaw. <coughs> excuse me, with his jowls wiggling. Mm -hmm. The American, the American people are not going to stand for that. That's yeah, that Robert Mission way of talking, you know. Yeah. American people are never going to stand. How does he know what the American people want or need? Or think well, they're not going to stand for it. American people are on his side. Listen, the evangelical zealot freaks that voted for Mitch McConnell, maybe they're not going to stand for anything positive. But the majority of Americans, uh, uh, unfortunately, that didn't mosey on over to the polls to vote. And that's another very uh, um, serious American problem. Yeah. The people that yeah. don't vote or maybe were prevented from voting because of some ridiculous uh, voter ID law that was put on low-income minority Americans when, when in reality all you need is your uh, motor vehicle's digital photo ID because you have to show your, your uh, birth certificate to get it. You can't get it without your birth certificate. So therefore that makes that ID the only one you really need. I mean, right? Or, or if, you're, if you're an immigrant who received a permanent green card uh, or whoever who receives citizenship document or no you I think you get yeah you get a card right if you're an immigrant you get a card mm, no you what do get you get a certificate a certificate welcome to the United States blah 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 and uh, your name is on it okay I mean to 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 make poor people pay extra for a voter ID is uh, obstruction voter obstructionism. Mm -hmm. But uh, that has what Republicans have been guilty of for years. Because they know that when a low-income person or even a mainstream American votes, nine times out of ten, if they're minority, if they're female, if they're young, uh, a young person, low-income, especially low-income, Nine times out of ten, they will vote Democrat. They, or they will vote for the progressive candidate. If it happens to be an, uh, the Green Party or Independent or whatever. They won't vote Republican. Let's put it that way. Mm. They will not vote Republican. And they know it. The GOP knows that. So they throw monkey wrenches. They throw all these roadblocks at the uh, poor. But you know what? Nobody does anything about it. It's business as usual continues. Good. If there was an election for New Jersey governor held this week, Governor Christie would lose to former state senator Barbara Bono. Oh gosh, I'm glad you brought this up. Go ahead. Christie's approval ratings have fallen that low. Christie was not charged with any crime, 
relating to Bridgegate, the tag name for the ill-fated scheme to divert traffic near the George Washington Bridge as political payback to the mayor of Fort Lee. But Christie cannot escape Bridgegate. The scandal follows him like a rain cloud. Does the fictional IR in Winnie the Pooh drip, drip, drip? Bridgegate is why he is not the vice president elect. There is hardly a person in New Jersey who believes Christie has been truthful about what he knew and when. But there appears to be no smoking gun. If U.S. Attorney Paul Fishman failed to find evidence directly linking Christie to the planning of the traffic mess in Fort Lee, it probably does not exist. That does not negate everything learned during the trial of the two former top Christie aides, Bill Baroni and Bridget Ann Kelly. Bill Baroni? Boney Maroney? The tales of an angry, ill-tempered chief executive who allowed his office and the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey to become highly politicized for one purpose and one purpose only, furthering Chris Christie's political career. That was odious. But, as it relates to the governor directly, it does not appear to have been criminal. So it is hard to be enthusiastic about State Senator Loretta Weinberg's request last week. The Teaneck Democrat, a vocal Christie foe, called on the Assembly to begin impeachment proceedings. In a statement on Thursday, she said, In light of testimony from the trial and the governor's public statements, I am requesting the Assembly Speaker consider impeachment, the outcome of which could deny Chris Christie the benefit of office and correct the public record to reflect the evidence provided in his federal court trial. Okay. The allegations of federal prosecutors and statements of witnesses who testified under oath cannot go unanswered. And impeaching Chris Christie would bar him from further public service in this state. He wants more public service? After eight years of governor? Yeah, he wanted to be vice president. Oh, 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 public sir. Oh, okay, on a national level. Yeah. And, 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 uh... Why um, do you think it was hanging around with Trumpy there? Do in the beginning. <laughs> Donald Trump, uh... With that face. Donald Trump, yeah, with that, that, that sad sack look on his face. That Donald Trump forgot all about, uh, little Chubsy Ubsy. He, and he used to, he called him my friend Chris. He used to call him, right? My friend Chris. Chris yeah. Christie, my, my buddy. Yeah, okay. On a practical level, impeachment is almost a no-starter. Christie is expected to leave New Jersey soon enough. He led Donald Trump's transition team, although he was dem demoted by Trump on Friday. Yeah, because of maybe because of Bridgegate that was taking place at the time. But then again, Bridgegate never uh, never became. Uh, Thing, uh, mm -hmm. Apparently. Yet Trump is notoriously loyal. Exactly where Christie may land is unknown, but <coughs> it would be a surprise if he landed back in Trent. Not even, not even a cabinet uh, uh, appointee for, by Donald Trump. Forget about, you know, uh, um, yeah, a uh, vice president. Not. not not even, not even, no, no federal position on Donald Trump's administration. The governor should still find a place somewhere inside the Trump administration. The 
this. And Chris Christie, between him and his wife, they're multi-millionaires. They really don't have to work. So don't feel sorry for them. That is not a reason to take impeachment off the table. If Christie did something that could be proven as an impeachable act, the legislature has a responsibility to act. But it comes back to the Bridgegate trial. No one offered a direct link, and without that, impeachment would be nothing more than a political exercise on the part of Democrats. An exercise that would no doubt exercise Republicans in New Jersey and nationally to rally behind the most improbable of champions, Chris Chris. Trying to impeach someone with about a year left in office who was not charged by a U.S. attorney would look like the political grandstanding it would be. That may be cold comfort to Democrats and to many New Jerseyans who feel <coughs> betrayed by Christie the Crusader. One year? Year and a half. He has a year and a half left? Oh, oh I think it's only a year and a half. Oh boy. Yeah, but to replace Chris Christie with a Wall Street boy from Goldman Sachs doesn't sound uh, like the, the kind of change New Jersey needs. Oh, well, no. Doesn't sound very progressive to me. <laughs> Excuse me, people. Assembly Majority Leader Lou Greenwald issued a statement in response to Weinberg's the calls for an impeachment hearing are irresponsible and a non-starter. Irresponsible. So, so we have a, uh, uh, he's a, a, a Democrat I take it? Who? This uh, um, majority speaker. Uh, Greenwald, yes. He's, he's a Democrat, yeah. so he he wants to leave Christie alone. Okay. Uh, well, he's another Democrat that does is not a, a, a progressive in New Jersey. Sounds like a pattern to me. You okay? What are you getting? Bu you get mm -hmm. buzz from the beer? No. <laughs> okay. I'm just trying to keep up here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You <coughs> put your fing put your finger as you read. I know. I I know where I'm or reading. Or your knuckle. Your knuckle. I'm just trying to read ahead. Okay. <clears throat> the calls for an impeachment hearing are irresponsible, yes. As we have collectively discussed as a nation since Thursday, Tuesday night, hmm. it's time to get started healing our state and coming together as a nation. Mm, good. When has that happened? Yeah, it sounds like that hipster kumbaya crap to yeah. me. Greenwald said. We have a great deal of important issues to tackle in New Jersey, from affordability to job creation. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to working together to solve those problems and improve the quality of life for our residents. Greenwald's rendition of Kumbaya. See, I didn't even read this article. I'm telling you, man, I'm a soothsayer. I, 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 I should be like Nostradamus. I should start gazing into a bowl of water. They, they call it scrying. A bowl of beer. Wait, a bowl of beer. They call it scrying, uh, um, which can be done with black obsidian too, the stone, or, or water. Uh, yeah, bowl of beer. Yeah. Hey, no exaggeration. Uh, the uh, the singer Cher used to go to a, a psychic from New Jersey uh, uh, known as the bread lady. She used to tear pieces of bread and throw them in the water and, 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 and get visions, see visions. She was, actually, she was actually quite good, quite accurate. And where did she live? She was, uh, she, she was from uh, Bergen County, New Jersey, up here. Yeah, somewhere. well. I think her last name was Fiorelli. 
the bread lady, the infamous bread lady. She was very accurate. She told her uh, her niece to stay off motorcycles, and her niece didn't listen, and she got killed. Well, that's nice. Well, the bread lady. She told uh, my cousin Augustine that you were going to uh, go on a bus tour to Florida, and you will meet your future hus husband uh, uh, with the with the first initial J. And she ended up marrying a guy named James. <coughs> yeah, and Cher, and Cher liked it. The, the uh, Kumbaya sounds a little flat to my ears. Yeah, like like uh, like flat beer, like flat cheap beer. There's some grandstanding going on there as well. But he is correct when he notes that there are pressing issues facing the state, the financial collapse of Atlantic City, the public pension mess, and the safety failures of New Jersey Transit. I respect Weinberg's commitment to getting to the truth of Bridgegate. She has been a tireless advocate for North Jersey residents who were directly affected by the lane closure. She doesn't quit, that is a good thing. But as unsatisfying as it may be to anyone who has seen New Jersey sink lower and lower these past seven years, impeaching Christie is not possible. There is no will for it in the legislature. And nobody is brought to justice that happens to be filthy rich. And there just isn't unimpeachable evidence to impeach and convict. If for some reason Christie is not offered a spot in the Trump administration, it will be hard going for him. He would have few allies in New Jersey. He and his eye whore rain cloud would be solitary champions uh, uh, companion, excuse me, inside the state house. Drip, drip, drip. Yeah. Trump is unpredictable. He may do what Weinberg cannot, diminish Christie. That wouldn't be impeachment, but it would be just desserts. Just desserts for a man who absolutely loves desserts. Correct. Boy, I come up with a good one every now and then. Correct. Just, just now, um, I just want to say I wanted that I want to dedicate this week's show to, to the late great actor Adam West and also uh -huh. to the very much alive former president of the United States, uh, Jimmy Carter, because I read an article where Jimmy Carter uh, went and shook, shook, shook the hand of everyone on the airline that he happened to be on and, and chatted with everyone and was very, very friendly. He is a great guy he, and a great humanitarian as well. Former President Jimmy Carter, you know, Works I don't... For I don't that for humanity. Right, Habitat for Humanity. Building houses for the poor. Physically out there, hammering nails, and you know what? People criticize him, they put him down, but you know what? He, he, he's a genuinely great human being. So, between Adam West and former President Jimmy Carter, uh, <clears throat> I dedicate the show to you too. And uh, do we have any so-called change of pace or environmental or animal animal oriented uh, readings? Uh, I don't see any. Is there any ridiculous uh, Amy Dickinson or Dear Abby? Uh, I don't see any stuff. So that's it. Unless you unless you have one. I have a long one, so I might not. Nah, you know what? Let's. Uh, if it's a long, good one. You think it's worth saving for next week? Or oh yes, of course. It's a lot. It, it 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 consists of a universal topic. Uh yeah, taxes. 
Yes. That's pretty universal. <laughs> Especially since the rich don't pay their fair share. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, people, for joining us for progressive discussions. As you can see around us, this is a grassroots revolution internet talk show. Um, some might call it low budget, but I don't care. It's all about content, content, uh, content. Excuse me. And uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, um, I just want to say that the next major election, from what I understand, there are many congressional and possibly also senatorial seats up for election and re-election. So it is very, very, very important that all Americans take the little bit of time that it takes out of your schedule to vote because we have to, uh, whether it be independent progressives or Democrats, we have to take back uh, the House and the Senate. And, uh, and then worry about Trump in 2020. But uh, this election is uh, way before 2020. Yeah. So, okay. All right. And, and, and also, many progressives that are associated with the group, the organization Our Revolution, started by uh, Senator Bernie Sanders and uh, Jeff Weaver. Uh, have won their elections in various states. Believe it or not, there are progressives even in southern and western states. Uh -huh. You just don't hear about them. Uh -huh, that's true. Because the, uh, all the right-wing <laughs> evangelical religious nuts don't want you to know that they exist. They, they, the media, the so-called liberal media keeps them um, off, off their uh, their list of reporting reported subjects. They're not mentioned. So, um, someone from that works for uh, Optimum Cable uh, had a News Twelve New Jersey. Uh, employee badge and knocked on my knocked on my door to try to get me to switch back to optimum from Verizon uh, Fios and uh, of course they ought, they sweetened the deal mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I told the woman exactly how I felt about the local news and how they uh, keep on repeating not only the same subjects but all trivial subjects to distract uh, New Jersey residents from hearing important things, what's really going on. All right, uh, they kind of they'll throw in a couple important subjects, but it's mostly nonsense. It's not the heavy-duty information that the public should be hearing. You know, um, and uh, she agreed agreed with me. She said she is a progressive that follows the underground internet news she is a um, mm -hmm. she's a big-time progressive and a uh, believer in many conspiracy theories and she just can't express herself publicly because you know she works for them so it, it's kind of like the uh, the news media we have now in America you know, they can't tell you how they really feel. Or not if they're being paid by a big corporation. Somebody's signing their paycheck. Yeah. Some fat cat is signing their paycheck. Mm-hmm. Um, and they expect loyalty. Yeah. Right. Um, oh, the, uh, the right-wingers are posting uh, articles uh, condemning Hollywood celebrities for uh, inciting uh, all this negativity towards... Uh, Republicans and violence, inciting violence, and uh, you know, um, uh, listen. 
When is an animal most dangerous? When, when it's backed into a corner and it, it has nothing to lose. When it has absolutely nothing to lose. So if you back mainstream Americans into, the cor into a corner and they have nothing to lose, and they, bec they become that desperate and angry, of course they're going to um, fight back. Torches and pitchforks. Hey. Just keep that image in your mind. Say so long to these people. So long, people. All right. I got that image. Oh, yeah. Torches and pitchforks.